Welcome back. In the last repair video, I did some woodwork reattaching the bottom of this really nice old grain mill uh, to the body. In today's video, I want to do again some woodwork, but on a slightly uh, larger scale. It's an old IKEA chair which has seen better times. Yeah, the upholstery is a little bit uh, mm. uh, but that's not the core problem. The core problem is that it's basically, uh, I'm trying not to rip off here my cables, that it's <laughs> falling apart. And it's not only falling apart, it already lost a part. Okay, so the main problem here is that all the joints back to front, they are basically completely, yeah, this here, too loosey-goosey. Uh, on the other side, oh, a little bit of overexposure here, just a sec. Uh, on the other side, basically, yeah, too. Um, the joints left to right are mostly still, yeah, this one not so, uh, mostly solid. Especially at the back, I, yeah, think they are solid enough. Um, so yeah, uh, first order of the day, take that thing apart. At least, yeah, separate, uh, the back from the front and uh, yeah, clean that thing up and uh, put it back together again and hopefully it will last another, okay, this is not over 30 year old, but uh, maybe another 25 years or so, we'll see. Okay, if I remember right, this comes off, yeah, without a hitch, or almost, yep. And that was really just, uh, yeah, put in with four nails at the four corners. There's a nail missing here, oh, danger, danger, second nail. And yeah, uh, this <laughs> fourth corner piece that was already uh, falling out. So yeah, and now we can almost, I mean, this is, This is coming out. Is that giving me a fuss? No, maybe, maybe not. Okay, uh, I think I need some tools and then we, uh, yeah, hammer this uh, apart. Uh, yeah, very carefully. Of course, I don't have a wooden mallet, uh, just uh, <laughs> something to, uh, you know, uh, re-roof the house. Uh, but I will take a little bit of wood in between and we should be fine. Yeah, that's coming. Let's try the other side. If that is still glued in here uh, perfectly, we don't need to disassemble it. We just have to get it apart in <laughs> two parts. Okay, something re really, really bad <laughs> will happen, probably because I only have uh, uh, two hands as soon as the whole thing comes apart. Ah, okay, I managed it. Two parts. Yeah, upon closer inspections, uh, that is also not really anymore attached here. And neither is this here. But it's hard to get out. Okay, nobody sees any scratches in here. That ain't flying. Um, let me think of something. Okay, <laughs> third hand. Not moving. I don't know why. Should be moving. 
because it's loose, but it doesn't. And yeah, this is no longer attached here, so. I have to change my strategy just a wee bit. Okay, now I'm doing what I really wanted to avoid. I'm prying uh, here in the hopes that nobody will ever see the nicks. <laughs> I mean, it's no longer glued and that is also loose. I don't have any idea why it won't comply. I have absolutely no idea why this was so hard. Huh. Huh. Maybe you're, uh, there are some carpenter types watching that and can tell me what I did wrong here. Anyway, uh, yeah, <clears throat> that piece here. Yeah, sorry, can't get it completely in shot, but this piece here, this is solid, so we can put that away and continue with the next nightmare, which is hopefully a little bit easier. Okay, that was easier, but we have still one more of those thingies here to go. Oh yeah. And there's a nail in here and I guess I will remove that first. Please keep count, we're searching for four nails. This is only the first one. This has been made obviously for bigger nails, uh, just a sec.
So all the while I was uh, <laughs> while I was exerting force, I was thinking, how can I get some mechanical advantage here? And finally it dawned to me, I have no idea if that works out, but yeah, I clamped a piece of wood here to that cross piece and that is held above ground a little bit higher than our yeah leg and now i can in theory <laughs> hammer down on the leg and maybe this will do something or not Or not, I say. Playing the next level of the mechanical advantage game. <sighs> okay, uh, yeah, that's it. Uh, half of that thing is still stuck down there. And it obviously didn't want it to move. So, um, yeah, to be honest, I don't see that really happening. But oh, there's still some material here. Uh, no, no, definitely not. Definitely not. That's it's not going back together again. So, um, yeah, if you have the same problem with the same <laughs> type of IKEA chair, uh, you need to find another solution. This is obviously not working out. And if you are a carpenter and by some chance watching that, um, yeah. Uh, I would appreciate a link to a video uh, where you show how you take those joints here. I uh, show you a uh, working or uh, uh, one that survived. How you take apart those joints. I can give you another close up here. Yeah, and that. Anyway, let me know. Uh, till next time. <laughs> But hold on a second. In the last repair video featuring that old grain mill, and I haven't carded and linked it yet, so uh, card here, link in the description, I bragged about adhering to pilot survival safety rules, so when disaster strikes, keep on flying the plane. So of course we will continue with the repair, even if it's now an uphill struggle. Meanwhile, I cleaned everything with wipes and alcohol. I didn't film that. So the next step would be to prep the mating surfaces. That is, send them down to remove any unevenness, broken out stuff and old glue. Two more remarks before we start. First, I recovered an obscene amount of steel and copper staples. Uh, yeah, they were holding on the upholstery to the seat plate. And I only recovered one, two, two and a half and three nails holding on the seat plate. Yeah, on the fourth corner, there never was a nail. Yeah, IKEA quality, I guess. These are the tools I will be using to prep the surfaces. Some small files, some sanding paper on a block, some sanding paper just here yeah, for hand sanding, and a small, that's my smallest one, unfortunately, chisel, and it should be, yeah, I sharpened it. I'm not a master sharpener, but yeah, reasonably sharp, I guess. 
And of course, we start with the yeah, <clears throat> most problematic mating surface here. Thank you. 
Okay, that's for prepping these surfaces. And I didn't forget to clean these two thingies here. I just forgot to film it. And yeah, that was the <clears throat> messed up joint. And I think, I think I will drive in here a few small pieces, one, two, maybe three small pieces of wood first, yeah between yeah, the teeth of uh, the joint that comes in here, just to yeah reattach that properly because uh, it has a little bit of a wiggle. But first I clean up everything. I've cleaned everything, the last step being yeah, vacuuming off any remaining sawdust, especially out of the different holes. I have some wood glue here, some water, uh, an excess of wipes, a hammer, or some yeah wood so I don't have to hammer directly on my chair. And yeah, I guess we start with the <coughs> messed up joint here. I made two plugs here, yeah, a little bit of sawing <laughs> and a whole lot of sanding involved here. And yeah, I couldn't uh, for the life of me get out that broken off piece here. So I just wiggle it around a little bit and drown it in wood glue. Made a little mistake there. <laughs> I plugged the wrong hole, so I have to, yeah, <clears throat> snip that off. I've test fitted these things beforehand because, yeah, <clears throat> they were not quite symmetric. But uh, yeah, if you put them in <laughs> in the wrong hole, they stick out and go not in all the way. But yeah, uh, I tested that beforehand. So let's put those in too.
just as a sanity check, I mean, yeah, everything is glued together and I'm sorry, I think I missed to film some segments, uh, or at least one, I remember, and if I was out of frame, I was hammering down from outside the frame to, yeah, of course, using a piece of wood in between to get the joints really together. Uh, yeah, sanity check. <clears throat> that looks not perfect, but almost good. Give me a sec. Okay, I yeah uh, put a little bit of, of wood in here to yeah align this properly and you can see yeah this is maybe not completely right angles but uh, yeah that's the natural <laughs> way the joints went together and somehow I doubt it was completely right angles all around uh, in the first place but yeah close enough besides we don't know if that was really cut to right angles here do we Reattaching the seat. So that's what I came up with. I cut out some, yeah, that's some scrap material here. It's not really wood, but wood like. Uh, different pieces, stripes of uh, two millimeter thickness and three millimeter thickness. And I fitted them in here all around just by yeah, sending them down where necessary, just a little bit to make them a little bit thinner until the plate, the seat, is yeah, nicely centered and not wiggling around. Uh, they don't exert any force yeah, outward here. So this is all a very loose fit here. And next I will mark holes here. <laughs> Two for each of these strips to drive screws in yeah so we have basically four screws on every corner holding everything together and that in place and if i feel lucky i even squeeze in a little bit of wood glue here where these things uh, touch the seat and the outside frame just to yeah as a good measure so let's get started And I did calculate up front where the screws have to go in. So yeah, the seat is 14.7 millimeters yeah, thick. And then we have the outer frame. And yeah, from that line to the top of the frame, it's 70.8 millimeters. So from the top of the frame, I have to go down 10.45 millimeters to hit the center of the seat uh, and yeah I made a makeshift template so if that wood is in here and you saw me using that then this distance here is exactly about 10.5 millimeters and I put that here on the top of the frame and marked out the holes and I have also two scratches here uh, can I find the second one yeah, another one. So they are, yeah, roughly equally spaced. Yes, it's another Tower of Hanoi setup because I really want these holes to go in straight.
Okay, <clears throat> I don't know if I've mentioned it already, but yeah, each of these inserts here is indexed. Yeah, I made some marks here so I know where it goes. And there are also here in that side, three marks here on the frame. So I know in which orientation the whole thing goes, <clears throat> goes again. And uh, yeah, after I drilled the first hole, yeah, on each piece, I indexed that hole with another two millimeter drill. Just, yeah, so I <clears throat> don't lose orientation. And now I will widen the holes just outside here in the frame with a three millimeter drill because yeah, I need some wiggle room here for the screw and yeah, it goes easier in that way. Okay, last step. I will now countersink the holes. Yeah, I do that by hand with the tool uh, until my screws uh, fit in snugly. And now it's time to glue and screw everything together. I don't know if you noticed it, but uh, 
Yeah, I ran out of the 3x30 screws, which I wanted to use and had to, uh, yeah, fall back to 3.5x35mm screws, but uh, yeah, yeah, from, from that distance you don't see the difference. Of course you see the difference! It's awful! Ah, okay, yeah, shit happens. Uh, I miscounted. <laughs> anyway, uh, that's it. That was the rebuild of my old IKEA chair and obviously <laughs> that is not going, uh, or oh, was never in the dining room. That was just a chair I have around here in the shop. And uh, for that it's hopefully good enough again. I can't be bothered uh, putting on upholstery right now. Uh, if it's too hard for my taste, I probably glue on some closed cell foam, like from a camping mattress, yeah, a centimeter or one and a half centimeters, something like that. But uh, at the moment, it's a chair again, and uh, yeah, it was quite an adventure. So, uh, till next time, bye!